But this week, we're delving into progressively more advanced math topics on the SAT math section. And this week, we will start with quadratics, polynomials, and factoring, with the emphasis being on factoring. When factoring, there are several methods you can use, and you'll often have to use more than one at a time. The most common ones you'll be expected to know are uh, factoring common factors, product sum, and perfect squares. So let's start with an example and see how we can apply these. So this question we see here just asks us to simply factor the expression we have. So let's go ahead and do it. First, we always want to check for any common factors that we can start by just pulling right out. Here, we see that every term has a shared factor of 2x squared. We see that because all of the coefficients, the numbers next to the x's, are all divisible by 2, and each of the x terms has a power of at least 2. So we can take out this 2x squared, factor it from the full expression, uh, and then what's left is each term then divided by 2x squared. We see here x squared plus x minus 2. Now, one important thing is whenever you factor, be it common factors or product sum or anything, you always want to check your work by multiplying back and making sure that it is equal to what you originally had. So if we do that here, expand each term, what we get here we see is indeed equal to what we started with. So we know we're right, at least so far. We factored out all common factors, the 2x squared we see here, but are we done factoring? No. Whenever you factor one method, you always want to make sure that you check if there are any other ways that you can factor. In this case, we see what we have left is actually a quadratic expression. So how do we factor quadratic expressions? Well, the number one way, and what you should always start by trying, is product sum. So let's do product sum method here. We want to factor the quadratic term, which is the right factor there. So let's just drop the 2x squared for now, but we'll make sure we throw it back in later. So how do we start with product sum? Well, the essence is we know what we're looking for is a factor something looking like this, with something x plus something times something else x plus something else. And we need to fill in these unknowns somehow, kind of by guessing and checking. We can start really easily with the two coefficients of the x's. Because if we look, on the left, we have a 1x squared. And because these coefficients of x squared x and the no x respectively each need to match, we can say that the numbers we see here times each other, the coefficients of x multiplied, also need to equal 1 to get 1x squared on the right-hand side. So this tells us that we can set each of these equal to 1. And we've now greatly simplified our problem into just two unknown numbers like we see here. Most problems will be this simple. If they're not, and you have some coefficient of x squared on the left that's not equal to 1, then you just need to add in all four numbers and guess a little more. Having simplified our problem to these two unknowns, which here we've written as a and b, how do we now find a and b? Well, the essence is something that we actually mentioned just a second ago. When we expand the right-hand side, all of the coefficients need to exactly match the coefficients on the left-hand side. Otherwise, the two expressions would not be equal. So applying that here, we see that the coefficient of x, which is 1, needs to match the coefficient of x to the right, which is a plus b. This gives us that a plus b is equal to 1. And then matching with the no x term, we have minus 2 has to equal a times b. So that gives us two conditions for a and b. And now we could solve this system of equations, or more often what we do is kind of just guess at what these numbers could be. So what two numbers can we multiply to get negative 2 and then add to get 1? Well, it's pretty easy to figure out. We can do a equals 2 and b equals negative 1. We can plug these in and see that they give us the correct answers. So these are going to be the solutions for a and b that will give us our final factored form, x plus 2 times x minus 1. Adding back in our 2x squared from before, this gives us our final factored form, which we see here. Now remember, whenever we finish factoring by one method, we need to make sure there's no other things that we can factor from the expression. Looking at this, we can see that we are indeed done factors. Nothing else that we can take out or factor in any way. So moving on, we're done with this problem. Let's now learn perfect squares with another example. This problem asks us which of the following is equal to this expression here, which we call an equivalent expressions type problem. Whenever we see these problems, we need to simplify, simplify, simplify. Sometimes the problem, sometimes the answer choices, and sometimes both. In this case, we just need to simplify the problem, so let's go ahead and do that. Whenever we're trying to simplify a big fraction like this, you want to start by factoring the numerator and the denominator. Then you can find common terms in the top and bottom that will cancel each other out. In this case, our denominator is already factored, so we only need to worry about our numerator. Okay, so how do we factor our numerator? 
we look at our methods, common factors, product sum, and perfect squares, and we see that there are no common factors and product sum could work, but this is a case where perfect squares is going to work much, much, much better. We can identify perfect square expressions as something of the form ax squared minus c. So first, note that there's no b term, there's no x term in the middle. And then also, very importantly, note that there's a minus on the c. If it's positive, you cannot use perfect squares, so keep that in mind. Okay, and now we can use perfect squares and factor this expression into what we see here. Effectively square rooting both the a and c terms, and then we have a plus and a minus in the two different factors. So let's apply this to the example we just saw with x squared minus 144. Here we see that the coefficient of x squared is 1, which of course is just 1 squared, and then the 144 we can identify as 12 squared. Okay, so when we factor it out like we see above, we get very nicely this factors into x plus 12 times x minus 12. And there we factored using perfect squares. Now let's go ahead and plug this back in to our full expression from before x squared minus 144 over x plus 12. We see when we do that, we get what we wanted. We have a common factor between the numerator and the denominator, which perfectly cancel out. That is the x plus 12 here. When we do that, we're left with x minus 12 from the numerator over 1. So when we factor, it doesn't go to 0, right? It just goes to 1. And then, of course, that's just x minus 12, which is our final fully simplified answer. Now, looking to our answer choices, we see this easily matches with answer C. Okay, one more cool thing that we can do with perfect squares. We can actually generalize what we just learned about perfect squares to things not necessarily of the simple form ax squared minus c. It actually boils down to anything of the form a squared minus b squared. And that then becomes a plus b a minus b, which you should recognize from what we saw before. So let's see a kind of interesting example of applying this. Let's take the strange expression x squared times y squared minus 64 and then we can identify that x squared y squared is actually the square of xy, so that is our a, and then 64 is of course 8 squared. So if we use our formula that we saw above, we can actually factor this strange expression into xy plus 8 times xy minus 8. Now you won't very often see expressions like these with weird terms like xy or whatever, but you should know how to factor them when you see them on the test. Now, another interesting generalization can be made to the quadratic factoring that we learned earlier. We said before that quadratic factoring applies to any expression with ax squared plus bx plus c, but actually it applies to any expression where the exponent of the first x term is twice the exponent of the second x term, like we see here. So let's apply this to an example. This question just asks us to factor this big expression here. So let's see how we can actually do this using quadratic factoring, even though we don't see what we expect of x squared and x. How then do we apply this quadratic factoring when we don't actually have a quadratic? What goes on the right-hand side here? Well, on the left-hand side, we have an x to the fourth. So to get that from the right-hand side, we're going to have to multiply two x squareds, right? So on the right-hand side, we're going to have x squared plus something and x squared plus something. And now we can just carry on product sum like we did before with an unknown a and b. So we see that our product has to be negative 4, and our sum has to be negative 3. So we can guess and check some numbers, and eventually reach that our numbers are 1 and negative 4. So we put that back into our expression on the right, and we see our factored form is x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 4. Let's put that back in, and we see, are we done? No, we're not done yet. We always need to check for more factors in the expression. In this case, you should identify the factor on the right x squared minus 4 can be further factored using perfect squares. Now note that the one on the left, x squared plus 1, cannot be because it has a plus in the middle, not a minus. Remember that minus c is crucial. So let's go ahead and factor the x squared minus 4. Now this just becomes x plus 2, x minus 2, 2 being the square root of 4 that we saw before. And now we can finally plug that in, and we see our final answer, our fully factored expression, is x squared plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2, and we finished this problem. And with that, we've covered the core topics for how to factor any type of expression for the SAT. And we've also learned how to approach a very common problem on the SAT, equivalent expressions. Next week, we'll learn another skill for equivalent expressions, which is exponents and radicals.
Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe and see a new video coming out from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!